Welcome, my name's Jake Hicks. Thanks for joining me in this video. Today we're going to be setting up a creative lighting setup for the home. So it's something that you can achieve practically anywhere really. You don't need a huge studio or anything like that. And already you can see that we've set up the backdrop here and that backdrop is actually just a window blind. So very inexpensive. Uh, and then we're going to start off with our first light where we're going to be able to get a, a shot immediately from the first light and then introduce the fill light, some hair lights. We're then going to introduce the lead coloured gels. And then finally, we'll be adding some uh, lens filters, so the Lee soft filters to add some gel flare. So anyway, let's get started, set up our first light and bring in our model. So I'm gonna set up my first light here, and this is gonna be my key light. And on this key light, I've attached a, I think this is a 22 inch beauty dish. It gives such a beautiful light compared to something like a grid or a softbox. So before we take this shot, I'm gonna set up my camera, okay? And I'm gonna set the lights up around my camera. We're gonna have the uh, ISO set to 100, which is gonna generally give us the best, the best quality. And then uh, for this particular shot in this environment, I've set the camera to f5.6. And the reason for that is that it's gonna give us a little bit of depth of field. And maybe if I was shooting this, uh, in, a, in a studio where I didn't have a lot of video lights on, so less ambient light, I would shoot at f2.8, just to give me even more depth. The shutter speed doesn't matter as much because the flashes are going off very, very quickly, so like at 4,000th of a second or something like that. So, you know, 60th of a second or 250th of a second is gonna give you the same exposure. That's not gonna affect the, ex the exposure in any way. Uh, and let's, let's see what we get. Let's take one shot and see where we are. So Gabriella's gonna keep her head up. That's it. Perfect, okay, because what I'm looking for is I'm looking for catch lights in the eyes. I want as much light in those eyes as possible. So we're taking a few shots here. And like I said, what I was looking for was that catch light in the eye. At the moment, I'm liking the image and this is a perfectly usable image. People, people would be happy with that shot. But for me, there is not enough data or detail in the shadows in this shot. So I want to see just a little bit more light in some of those shadows. So if I add a fill light here, which I'm going to do via a small softbox on the floor, it'll just add a little bit of a little bit of light in there and also soften up those shadows. So let's do that next. So I've now brought in my second light, and this is a small softbox. I think it's about a 60 by 60 centimeter uh, softbox there. And I brought it in nice and low, it's obviously gonna be out of shot, and I've attached it to the same light stand that my key light is on. Okay, so let's take our first shot and see what, see what we end up with. there is definitely a lot more light in the shadows down there, especially underneath the jawline. And when you use a fill light, it shouldn't be about trying to show everybody that you're using a fill light. Its only job is to fill in the shadows that are already there. You don't want it to create any other shadows. You just want it to fill in the shadows that you've got. I want to add a little bit more depth between my subject and my background. Okay, one of the things that I'm always looking for in my images, whether it be portraits or fashion, is to always create depth between foreground and background. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna bring in two hair lights at the back there, which is gonna to help to separate my model from the background. And it's just gonna add a little bit of light on the edge of the hair, which will really help to give us that depth in shot. So what we've done now is I've now brought in these two extra lights into our set. So uh, we've got four lights now. We've got a key, our fill, and these are gonna be our hair lights. And this light is really just catching the side of the head here on this side and on the other side. And that really should just pick up the hair enough just to create that, that separation and depth. One thing to bear in mind is the fact that they need to be quite high, so above the model's eye line, because we want to be coming down and making sure that the highlights appear on the shoulders and on the arms. If they're too low, what can happen is that we end up getting shadows on top of the shoulders here. And sometimes if you're photographing a guy with short hair, then you can get shadows on tops of the ears as well. Let's take some shots of that and then we'll play around with the exposures again and see what we like, see what's looking good, see what's not looking good and, and adjust it from there. Just take a couple of shots just to get a feel for it and let's review those just real quick. Okay, so at the moment, it's just a kiss of light in there, which is what I'm personally looking for. I don't want it so bright that it screams I'm using hair lights and they're, and they're you know, because hair has natural oils. So those, they're gonna quickly go off to blown out highlights. Uh, I, this is, at the moment, this is, this is a, good, a good power for what I'm looking for. But let's take, let's take these a, a stop lower. I don't have any expectation of knowing exactly what it's gonna do before I take the, take the picture. So I've just reduced those by a stop. And at the moment, with that being, both of those lights being a stop lower than it was before, you can barely see that there's much going on there, but you still, you can see highlights on top of the shoulders and there's highlights on the hair. Uh, let's go one stop over so we can see what that looks like. So let's go, so we were already one stop below. So we wanna go 
basically up two stops from there. So at the moment, this is what I wasn't looking for, okay? So the hair at the moment is now very, very bright. So it's too bright for me. So I'm just gonna pop them back to, back to where they were. So let's take them a stop down. Just bring your chin up slightly, that's it. Love that, that's nice. Perfect, okay, for me, that's, that's a sort of happy medium between you know, having that impact there, that separation between model and background, but not so bright, so as it's blowing out the highlights. So at this stage, I'm really happy with the shot that I have. I've set out, so I've got a beautiful key light here, which is giving us nice definition underneath the jawline. I've filled in some of those shadows with our small softbox below, and I've now separated my model from the background to add some depth to my shot by bringing in those hair lights. So for this next step, what I'm gonna bring in is I'm now gonna bring in some color via the Lee Color Gels that we're gonna to apply to our hair lights. And we're then gonna just, just try and wrap some of that colored gels around the edges of our model. So this is, the, uh, this is the Lee Filters pack, which is my pack, the definitive color pack that I'm gonna be using the colors from today. But on the back of this pack, we do have a color wheel that I've put on there just to help you out when you're choosing your colors because color theory is a huge subject, but there's a couple of key things that you can sort of bear in mind which will keep you, keep you on the right track. As a general guide, if you're using two colors, then you want to be looking at colors that are opposite one another on the color wheel. So they're called complementary colors and they could be orange and blue, they could be the greens and reds, the purples and yellows. These are the colors that are opposite one another on the color wheel. I'm gonna start off with the complementary pair of orange and blue, which is something that I use a lot. And I think that that's visually to us, it's a very, like the orange is the warming of a sunset or the beach and the blue is the sky and the sea and that sort of thing. So those colors work well together and you see them used a lot in logos and, and they're used in cinema all the time. Okay, so that's what we're gonna start off with. So when I'm attaching the gels to my lights, we don't need to be overly precious about it in this instance because we're using the grids. Just a, just a simple couple of inches of uh, this black gaffer's tape and then it just peels off and doesn't leave any residue. So that's, that's what I use. So I've just put the gels on those two backlights. I haven't changed the power in anything at all. I'm just gonna take a shot and see what that looks like. So what can happen with color gels is that color gels tend to take away anything from one, two, or three stops of, of light. So again, it's something that you need to bear in mind. It's even though these lights were the same power before, they've got different colored gels on them. So I need to be adjusting these heads independently now. So maybe the orange will need more or less than the blue and so on. So the shot that we've got at the moment, I quite like it, but let's just increase the power and see what it looks like. I always gotta be playing with that because something may stand out to you that you hadn't seen before and you like the direction that it's taken. So I've just increased the power of both of those gels now by one stop on each of them, okay? I quite like the blue being one stop over, but in the orange here, for me, it looks like we're starting to clip in the oranges. So the oranges are getting quite bright to the point that they are clumping, clumping together a little bit. So I'm gonna leave the blue at one stop over and I'm actually gonna bring the orange back down, okay? So let's take a few shots like that. So again, at this stage, I'm now happy with this shot as well, but now I wanna take it just that one step further. And we're gonna do that by introducing uh, this colored flare effect up into the top corners of, of frame. And we're gonna do that via the Lee Soft filter that we're gonna apply onto our camera lens. And one thing that we can do to increase that flare is to bring those lights a little bit closer at the back there. So that they're pointing more straight down the barrel of the lens. And I've swapped lenses because of the lens filter that I've got uh, will fit onto the front of this one. Uh, so at the moment, you can see that even though they're together, they were getting a little bit of flare at the top there, but nowhere near enough for what I'm, for what I'm after. So I've brought those two lights together, um, but we're still not really getting any flare. So let's now add the soft filter onto the front of this lens and see what effect we get. So now I've just attached my Lee filter holder to the front of my lens and I've already put the Lee soft filter in there. This is actually a number two, they come in a range, but this is the number two in power. Uh, so let's take a shot with that now and see what effect we get immediately. And it's important to note that I have not changed anything else in this setup. I haven't increased the power of any lights or anything like that. All I've done is added this filter. 
and immediately we can see that we have this, this gorgeous burst of colour coming in from both the left and right top corner there. So I mentioned before that these Lee soft filters come in a range of densities. This is, this is quite a low one, but you can have one that creates a huge amount of flare. I would definitely recommend playing with that. And just on that, one question I get asked a lot is, does it actually blur the image? And these don't blur the image at all. Uh, you're gonna have a very sharp image in there, but it's just flaring the light as it enters the lens. So that's why I would always use this on the day in camera, rather than doing it later on in post pro. And on top of that, you always wanna be doing as much in camera on the day in front of the client or subject so that they can see exactly what's happening and you're not going, oh, I'll fix it later or I'll change this later because you open up a whole door for them to start changing colors and you know, can we swap faces and add a different color in there and move it around? Do as much in camera on the day as possible. And these diffusion filters here, these Lee soft filters, enable me to do that. So that's been our gelled flare setup. And right from the first light, we had a usable image and we just added a little bit of fill light there. And then we added our hair lights just to give a bit more separation between the model and background. And then we added some creative elements with the colored gels just to add some color to the to the shot and then we added some gelled flare by using the Lee soft filter at the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope there's something that you can take away from there and have a play with. Uh, just don't be too bogged down by you know the ratios and exposures and that sort of thing. Just go with what you think looks good and I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine. I've been Jake Hicks. Thanks very much indeed for watching. Mm -hmm.